my name is Jeff Fritz. I'm a program manager on the ASP.NET team, and I'm working on web forms, WCF, some other things in the .NET framework. But we're doing things to kind of make sure that you can still be modern and active with your ASP.NET on the full desktop framework applications. All right? So, what's new? What have we done with ASP.NET in 4.6.2 and 4.7? Who's installed 4.7 here with their creator's update on Windows 10? Nobody. Nobody's installed .NET 4.7. You're kidding. Okay. One. I've got one person in the back. Two. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. When you go home, open up your Visual Studio 2017 installer, go into the Individual Components tab, and choose .NET Framework 4.7. I've got a couple of cool features in there that are going to help help with bug fixes, and there's also stuff in there that's going to help with database interaction to make things faster. In particular, we've started lighting up asynchronous functionality with your session state providers and with your output cache providers. All right? So anybody do any JavaScript on their ASP.NET web page where they're making multiple requests back to the server, the same server you served your web pages from? Nobody. OK, guys. This is an interactive session, okay? I'm here talking to you. If I wanted to talk and not get anybody responding, I'd record a video, all right? So raise your hands, interact, it's okay. I don't bite. Yes, one person down here is happy to see me. So listen, so we put asynchronous functionality into these providers so that when folks are making requests from their JavaScript uh, scripts, whether it's jQuery or React or Angular, back to your website, we can serve those asynchronously. We can uh, skip blocking and make sure that we return all of your content as fast as possible. That's a pretty cool thing. We've heard folks who have problems where they have blocking inside their application because we're requesting session, and session is locked because we're, we do read-write lock on our session state in ASP.NET. They're locking session while other JavaScript requests are coming in. Well, those other JavaScript requests want session also, and they're blocked. So now we end up with a queuing effect. So we've put some things in to allow for concurrent requests per session ID. So you'll be able to throttle those requests appropriately, and you don't end up with a DDoS problem where you have somebody with a really maniacal JavaScript coming through and querying your website all the time. OK? We've also put some features in to enable in-memory table optimizations. This is really cool stuff. So typically, SQL Server, when you're writing session data down, it's, it's writing to disk. You need to wait for it to be committed to disk before you can access it again. Well, we can now save that data in memory using the in memory features, and it'll come back and run much faster. So we're trying to remove that bottleneck that session and output cache both have inside your applications. This is, this is my favorite one. <clears throat> I am so glad they put this in. Who enjoys running this silly ASP.NET reg SQL statement? Nobody, that's right. Because it's that thing you run once, you forget about it, and the next time you go to set up a website, you gotta go, how do I run that command again? And you open a command prompt, and you go to run this command, and then you realize, I need the developer command prompt to run that. So you end up going to the developer command prompt, and then you run this, and you've got to find all the switches to configure your database. No more. With the new providers we have, as soon as you point to a database, we will build out the schema appropriately for you, assuming you've given your provider appropriate credentials to build and write database tables and schemas. So let's take a look. These are things that you can do right now with .NET 4.6.2 and .NET 4.7. So I'm going to go over, he needs this one for the birdie. Is it that one? Am I on the right one? No. Nope. That's another demo we're going to see in a little bit. That one. All right, let me stop this. So let's take a look. I've written a very simple web application here. It's got a default page. I wrote, just four areas, first counter, second counter, third counter, four counter. I'm going to run back to the web application. I'm going to fetch an increment counter and write it into each one of these four areas when I click this button. I'm going to do that with jQuery. 
Why jQuery? Because it comes in the box. I could have done something fancier with React, Angular, Knockout. jQuery works nice. It's in the box. Easy for me to show you this. So every 100 milliseconds, we're going to reach back to counter ASPX. We're going to bring back whatever the counter is and write it into one of those four areas on the page. Simple, except I have session state. Session state writing to my local SQL server. Now, if I was writing to in memory, in memory, I don't have these types of read, lock, read and write lock types of issues because everything's in memory and it runs really, really fast. It's in process with IIS. When you start to write out of process somewhere else, we need to make sure that we read and write and lock appropriately. So let's do it. Let's see what happens when we run here, connecting to SQL Server out of process synchronously. And I'll click my little link here. And it starts counting slowly, OK? So slowly, all right, you know, I, if I have folks who are trying to hit this, if you're trying to build sections of your web page, it's going to take a little bit of time. So let me just kill that application. So we have these new features that you can find, and I'm going to show you right over here in NuGet. These are NuGet packages. The, the new async output cache provider here, and the new async SQL session state provider, these are going to be released later this week. But these two providers will be on NuGet, like I said, end of the week. And they allow you to automatically configure and point to your SQL your SQL server and connect to it asynchronously. So you're going to get the performance bump. When you install it, and this was kind of the problem why I took a minute or two to get started here, we actually overwrite that session state property and the output cache property inside of web config for you. So I had to roll back a demo and then roll it forward now. You can see here, this is what the session state area looks like that we're going to now make available for you. Cookie list, regenerate expired session ID is true. Custom, and then here's the custom provider, SQL session state provider async. This works for any ASP.NET on the .NET framework. So I'm going to remove this one. XML comments, got to love them. There we go. All right, so I'm using my new SQL session state provider async. I'm actually going to go and push this right out to SQL Azure. And I have a connection string defined up here, SQL Azure. And you can see the name of my database I'm connecting to, initial catalog, ASP.NET 4.7 demo. The last thing that I got to make sure I include here is we add a session module. Why do we need a session module? It's asynchronous. We need to make sure that the module hears that session when it comes back from the database. So I will now start, and I'm going to have a problem. Line 30 what? <clears throat> I've got an extra one there. One more time. No. 45. I've got extra comments all over the place. Am I good now? Did I do it right? Got it that time. So now it's using my new providers. It's going to connect and be interacting with SQL Azure. There's a reason why I have another SQL local connection here in case I can't get to Azure. Because network connections on the Wi-Fi. There we go. All right. Start counting. And it's already flying through this. OK? You can see it's going through it much, much faster. All right? Because we're not blocking. We're making the request all the way to Azure through crummy conference Wi-Fi much, much quicker. OK? So if you're running into bottlenecks with people making requests to your application, you want to do more JavaScript interacting with your server, check out these new providers. 
And they are, I'm going to stop this. Yeah, and there's my firewall. The providers are, I don't have the names of them up there. Uh, I have them in the blog post that you'll see on the web dev blog later on. They are, let me go back to this so you can see it right there. They are Microsoft ASP.NET Output Cache, Output Cache Module Async, or SQL Async Output Cache Provider. There's also the uh, Microsoft ASP.NET Session State, SQL Session State Provider Async. So these are things that you can do now with ASP.NET 4.7. Works great on your servers, also works on your desktops. All right, let's talk about some things that are coming soon. Let's talk about the future. What? We've been doing a lot of talk about containers and lift and shift to the cloud, but there's things that you can't do with ASP.NET. Like asynchronously, some of the things that you do on a page, you don't always get the same HTTP context, context back when you're returning into the page or you're returning back into your MVC controllers. So how do we do that? We're investigating introducing a feature we call execution step. What this will do is it'll allow you to intercept the pipeline before a web page constructor is actually fired. At that point, you can do whatever you need to do and then pass um, execution back to the page or the HTTP handler and let it process. And then when the page is done, it will return control to you and you can continue whatever work that you need to do. So this works really good for folks who are building profilers and other tools where you want to examine what's going on inside your application. The second thing that we're exploring is something we're calling configuration builders. Okay? Now, configuration in ASP.NET, in .NET Framework, you can't modify what's inside of web config or app config without writing it to disk or you write some sort of other file that's encrypted that will transform and inject into your configuration manager. So it's a little bit tricky to do that. If we're doing things where we want to bring in data from a Docker container that has environment variables that, is be, that are being passed in, you're orchestrating and sending in Docker secrets, you don't want that written to disk inside your container. You want to be able to have that live in memory and get passed right into the execution of your application. So we see other applications of this, including Azure Key Vault, that you may want to do this in. So I'm going to start with configuration builders first. And that's this. This is an example. Let's jack up the font size there a little bit. This is an example web config that we're exploring, where you're able to specify config builders and then an array of config builders in your XML at the top of web config to say, we're going to bring in environment variables or environment variables and we're going to replace key value pairs. Finally, JSON items. And here's a JSON file to read and inject into my web config. So I'll have things like my app settings or connection strings where I'll say, you apply these config builders for JSON environment and the key value and it will replace these things if there's a matching environment variable. So things like computer name we know are common inside of Windows uh, operating systems. So if there's a computer name environment variable set, this value will be replaced with the name of the computer. And where, we've ha where we have this environment variable here, it'll replace that with the name of the computer. No code needed to do this. You, can get, you get to continue working with your configuration manager just the same way. You just need to add this section to your configuration. So if I minimize this and show you what the browser looks like for this. So here's my app settings up at the top. So my app settings have already received all of these values. I only had test setting one, two, and three, and computer name defined in my app settings, but it brought in all these other things because I said to include things from a JSON file. And that JSON file had super duper feature here defined. 
but here's the name of my computer and it did a replace inside my test setting. Is that something that you guys would find valuable to orchestrate and move your ASP.NET applications into Windows containers? Can I see a show of hands? Okay, so the folks sitting, I see about half to a third, a third to a half, okay, cool. Let me show you the other thing that we're talking about doing. And this is, that's the wrong page to show you. Let me log back in here. This is our execution steps. So what we've done, this is a very simple ASP.NET application. We've written an extension here, use transaction per request. And if I take a look at this, Okay, this receives an HTTP application and it injects on request step. So on the request step, right, this is before your page is constructed or before your HTTP handler is constructed, this will fire. It receives the HTTP context and it receives a pointer, a delegate called next that you're going to pass through and be able to say, continue processing the pipeline. In this case, we created a transaction object that we just, we, we conjured out of thin air. This is something we created. We're adding it to the HTTP context, and then we're able to fetch it later when the request ends. <clears throat> so now, if you do an HTTP context current, when you're inside of your page, sometimes you aren't able to get to that. But because I've written this with this transaction object, my transaction object doesn't need to know what HTTP context is. I can uh, leave it with the knowledge of what async local is, and I can do all my business logic processing outside of the scope of system web and all of those things. So this transaction object just creates a GUID and it returns it. So if I look at the browser for this one, I get the same transaction ID the whole way through, even though my default page is executing things asynchronously. I have the same transaction before the page is created, when the page async task that I wrote in the middle of it, when that starts, through my task, the conclusion of the task, at the end of the page and at the end of the request. So you have the same context for the entire thread, right? Because when I'm executing a page, sometimes you jump threads on your IIS, okay? So this is something that's a little bit more advanced if you're doing async processing. All right, let me go back to the PowerPoint. So that was that demo. My call to action, let me just wrap up. Try these new async features today. You can get them for ASP.NET 4.6.2, for ASP.NET 4.7. Try updating your SQL provider. Try using async and allow these um, simultaneous connections. I'm going to share the source code that I used for this demo on my GitHub, C Sharp Fritz, Build 2017, ASP.NET Web Forms. It's not there right now. I'll, I'm going to push it when we get done here. Um, please revisit the, the session recording. There's a camera over there. Hello, people. On the recording, um, you'll be able to revisit and check this out if you need to see more about it. And check out more at Microsoft Virtual Academy Online. There's evaluation forms available. Fill them out. Your input is important so that we can make build better next year. Thanks a lot.